Hello everyone. So welcome back so with uh, another uh, Wednesday talk on topic. So the, I mean, this is the third topic on the Wednesday talks on the mainframe. So th today in this topic, so I thought like let me cover all the complete modules that we work on the mainframe uh, within a couple of minutes. So that the agenda would be like uh, normally how do we connect to the mainframe? Then a TSO ISPF overview. Then uh, well, uh, I'll give you some overview on the JCL the same way on the COBOL then on the VSAM then on the DB2 and then on the CICS and then what are the tools and and its usages and how do we use especially uh, for the developers or the programmers I mean it can be in a maintenance uh, a maintenance or support projects who is working on the mainframe IBM mainframe ZOS okay so without wasting any time so let me move ahead first let's understand so if you are completely new to the mainframe and you don't know anything about this and how do we work so let me tell you so how we work so it's been almost a decade that i have been working on the mainframe so normally first what we do is first we need to have an uh, uh, emulator that need to be installed on your computer so if you look at here uh, the logo it's a mocha tm3270 so similarly you will be having a different emulators so in order to connect to the mainframe first is the emulator and these are the different emulators that you see there uh, are available so based on the company uh, that your organization that you're working so they chose it say so you haven't listed their IBM uh, IBM uh, come uh, IBM PCOM also will be there so that is uh, not listed there okay so then next comes to the internet so you need to have the internet as well it's a very good uh, i mean it's a medium uh, good bandwidth and so that in order to connect to the mainframe system okay so then uh, you need to you need to have your mainframe id created uh, it's basically uh, when you join for the any organization so you're getting this or ad and you can log into that this particular uh, system okay so that is the best first step so first is you need to have an emulator you need to have the mainframe id and internet to connect to the mainframe system okay let's talk about the tso and ispf okay so the next step uh, that we will be uh, hearing is about the tso and ispf so if you look at here so this is a, a tso ispf screen and before that uh, when you log in to mainframe so you'll be seeing the first screen here so where you enter tso command and then you connect and as soon as you log in so you'll be seeing this first screen on the mainframe uh, is a tso i mean ispf screen okay so what exactly this is dso stands for the time shading options in this uh, uh, we uh, come across uh, panels or the screen and uh, this is a uh, where uh, concurrently we can access multiple screens at a time and uh, we execute several different uh, TSO commands to interact uh, uh, to move from one screen to another screens or different operations that we use if you want to check your time you spay you type as TSO space time and if you want to submit the GCL you type uh, SUB and there are several different other commands that we come across I have created another video on this uh, on the TSO ISPF for different commands and its usage if you haven't watched that so you can just watch that my video I have covered almost all the commands that we use on it ISPF stands for the interactive search and the display facility. It's a software that uh, user can interact with menus for the required operations. Okay, and the commands that can be used in TSO can be entered via the ISPF panel. Okay, that's about the TSO ISPF. Now the, the coming to the very important part that is GCL. So this is the, this is the next step that any mainframe developer will come across, or the mainframe programmer. Or it can be anything. It's you, either you can be a system programmer or an application programmer, or it's you working in a production support project. So you will come across this JCL, and as with, I mean, any uh, TSO ISPF will be there. Okay, this is a sample uh, uh, JCL. Normally, JCL stands for Job Controlling Language. So it is used to control the batch programs, either for maybe for the compiling and executing your programs, and. Uh, and passing the data from one program to the another programs you can create the files and the data sets we call it as a data sets and the files and then sending the data to a report or sending an email or printing those particular reports and further different operations uh, you can do it and you do a sorting operations like filtering the records copying the records 
or deleting the records so multiple things that comes into the picture right so those all will be covered as part of the jcl let's move it on to the another one talking about the programming language so cobol is uh, a very largely used cobol programming language there are more than billion lines of uh, there are billion lines of code that's been written from an uh, ages so it's it's a huge i can say okay so the cobol is a common business oriented language which is mainly developed for a business application uh, earlier it was uh, started for some other different uh, scientific and research or uh, 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 the things and the space aerospace different uh, research uh, thing came and later on it was it became popular for the business applications and it is a structured programming language it's very easy to understand and maintain it's uh, it's very simple i'm saying you it's very simple so even though the people say like it's a very old language who will learn it's not like that so it's very easy and uh, you can learn very quickly as well a cobol is needed to develop any mainframe application that can be related to banking finance real estates e-commerce or hospital or insurance so so these are the different uh, applications where the cobol is being used it can run in both windows and mainframes as well i can say like 90% of the applications of cobol program which are written on the ibm mainframes let's move on to next topic that is visa so vzam uh, it stands for the virtual uh, storage access method so this i can say like unlike you have a, you might have heard about the databases rdbms right like a oracle sql server mysql right and the db2 so vzam is also similar uh, to uh, storage i can say so where uh, the data is stored on the mainframe and uh, the vzam dbs are divided into Uh, four types. I mean, I can say KSDS, ESDS, RRDS, and LDS. The main usage will be creating and accessing and uh, deleting. Okay, the VSAM files are accessed by the COBOL program, or it can be by the JCLs, or it can be by the online uh, CICS programs, and several other programming languages also being used. The either it can be the PL Bhavan, uh, C. okay so those are the other uh, languages or using rex also you can uh, access so that's how the vzam is mainly for the data storage okay next data storage is a uh, db2 so you can see uh, i mean if you look at this particular snapshot where which is coming here right so it's a qmf i mean it's sorry it's a spoofy i mean using qmf you go to the spoofy and uh, then you write so uh, queries there if you want to write some queries so we go to this particular command area and we write the queries we test it then after that we implement back to the program so either it can be the pilbavan or it can be the cobol programming or it can be a rex where we call a db2 using in order to do that so you need an sql so if you look at the bottom you can see the sql query so i'm just trying to call a simple uh, uh, query where it says select star from start so that means uh, i'm trying to retrieve some student details from the uh, by hitting it to the db2 database okay so it is an ibm database system same like an oracle or an sql so it's an rdbms it's an rdbms like relation database management system apart from the vzam database we also use db2 as per the re- as per the requirements it is used in both batch as well as online so what is batch jcl is a batch and uh, online is nothing but it's a cics we'll see that Okay, so now next uh, next comes to the CICS part. So in the CICS, so if you look at the particular screens, I mean, I can say simply say that it's an online. So if you are accessing any of the websites, uh, that we call it as an online, right? So in the mainframe world, CICS is nothing but it's a online. It's a real time communication, so which gives an instant results. So it stands for the Customer Info Information Control System. People call it as CICS. and uh, it also called as an online system that gives and real time results and then these are made up of screens where user can interact with the screens and get the results immediately and uh, the, the example is a simple example i can say that if you are using an atm machine if you are swiping the atm uh, if you are swiping your visa card or the master card that means you are connected to the mainframe so then it, it is mainly consist of uh, here we call it as a transactions the screen that you see here at the the left side uh right side so this is a simple screen so where you're trying to enter some details and it hits 
it pulls the information either it can hit the vsam database or it can be hit the db2 database and pull the information and uh, give you within a couple of instantly uh, that's we, that's why we call it as a real time system okay so talking about this next will be the tools okay the tools and usage so here when we talk about the tools so it's a we have version control tool and in the version control tool you will be uh, seeing change main endeavor penvalent or librarian isp develop and the uh, version control when i talk about the version control it's uh, it's similarly you might today today's world you might be he hearing about uh, uh github or bitbucket right so it's a uh, i mean i mean if you're working for a dot net java so there you hear you hear about this when you're working on the mainframe so you hear about the change pin uh, endeavor isvw right so in mainframe also there are a lot of modernization that is coming up so the people are trying to uh, create an a uh, uh, version control tool using github as well so there are a lot of i th i think the few of the projects might have already started that so there is a lot of mainframe modernization is going on the you'll be seeing you'll be soon seeing a lot of uh, changes within the mainframe uh, debug to debugging tools like xp editor intertest smart test and uh, if you want to, i mean debugging when i say if there is an issue and if you are you want to try uh, if you want to trace uh, the root cause of the issue you definitely you need some uh, you can use a debugging tools help that is xp editor and intertest and uh, scheduling tools you have ibm opc ca uh, ca products uh, ca7 ca7 i mean ca has several uh, uh, scheduling tools so one is ca7 and bmc uh, they use control m and asg they use a zeki and then coming to the file handling tools we use compuware uh, file aid and uh, then ibm file manager so these are the uh, tools uh, if you're working on the mainframe environment so these are the tools that we uh, will be using for a specific purpose as i said like version control tools debugging tools scheduling tools and uh, the file handling tools okay so now let's look at the mainframe applications uh, the mainframe applications are we have a batch process and we have an online process what is a batch process we we hear this word a lot it is a single task environment uh, and a series of programs executed sequentially like if you are generating a reports or if you are uh, processing some data and uh, doing some uh, business calculations and sending back that particular data to a different system either it can be a dot net system or the java system or any of the unique system so that's where uh, this batch process so when i say batch the volume will be high uh, there will be a millions of records that process within a couple of seconds right so the process takes very speed so we have a big processes running on the mainframe so with that process so these batch jobs run takes uh, very fast there were there were several tests that's been done comparing with the the windows servers and the mainframe system how much fast it is so i mean there are a lot of things so that's a that that's a secondary thing so it's uh, basically uh, the large volume of data to be processed online it's a cics environment so where uh, not only cics we also have ims as well uh, and the transaction uh, monitoring uh the most uh, the widely used is the cics it's a it is called as a multitasking environment and uh, you get a real time results that's an instant results okay so these are the two different kinds of application that you'll be seeing uh, there is batch process and online process right so the types of programs uh, when you, we are talking about the batch programs so you will be uh, seeing a combinations of here so either it's a simple cobal program you will be writing a cobal program and uh, you will be assigning some ps files and you complete that or if you want to use a db2 if you want to call a db2 database i mean tables using cobal program yes you can do it in the batch program or if you want to use a vsam as a either to read the data of or you want to write the data into the vsam file you can have this combination and also the other combination is a cobal db2 and vsam at the same time uh if you're writing cobol program either it can uh, first it may pull the data from the db2 then it may write the data into the vsam file or and also it can read the data from the ps file and then so on so these are the different kinds of a combinations of a batch programs that you can see and coming to the online a cics you will be seeing cobol along with the cics and the cobol cics db2 cobol cics vsams and cobol plus db2 
CICS and VZAM. So this will be the online part. So that means within the COBOL, if you consider COBOL as an umbrella, so within that you will be seeing DB2, CICS, VZAM and so on, right? So online programs we don't use a sequential file that is physical sequential files whereas in batch you can use that online we use cics and uh, db2 so that's it thank you so much for watching this if you do like please comment on the below comment section and if you haven't subscribed so please do subscribe so thank you so much i'll be uh, coming up coming back with uh, another tutorial on the next week. Thanks a lot.